Imagine you are the sky, and your body is the most beautiful blue. Sometimes your body is a flame red, sometimes a soft glow, and when you are changing, my God, when you are changing, it is everything all at once. Imagine you spread your arms wide and they call it sunrise. Imagine you are every star, that you hold all the lights of the world in your mouth. Imagine you are the ocean and you make the world possible. Imagine that with your hands you can feed and move and heal and quench and cleanse. Imagine that you are the wind and you can move through small places. You are the gentlest breeze, the hardest blow. Imagine you can kiss your lover's face as passionately as you can spread a raging fire. Imagine that without you, everything is still. Imagine you are the earth and you have never stopped changing. Your body is a home for the living and the dead. Every good thing resides within you. Now imagine that you pull yourself from the dust and you build yourself a body. You give yourself a new name. You put all the sky and the sea and the wind and every good thing into this body and it is yours. And here you are. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. That poem was inspired by a conversation I had last year at Burning Man, this is my third burn. And I had a conversation at Sacred Spaces with a Buddhist monk who told me to imagine that there's a line surrounding me. There's a line surrounding you. And everything, here I'll just put this on. Everything that exists within that line is your reality. And at any given moment, you can choose to step over that line and into a different reality. And that thought has, stood with, uh, has stuck with me uh, since that conversation. And so I started thinking about what are ways that I can step out of my current reality and into a new reality and how in order to get to the other side of that line, we have to use our imaginations. And so I'm gonna talk to you all about uh, how the imagination can be used as a tool for personal transformation and social change. So uh, Lewis Carroll has a brilliant quote that says, um, Imagination is, is the best tool against the war. Is it, what is it, what is the quote? A best, the against the war, the best tool in the war against reality. The best weapon, imagination is the best weapon in the war against reality. And so if we consider our reality, what we see in the world on the day to day, there's a lot of you know, destruction of the earth or police brutality or transphobia or whatever social ills that plague our communities. How do we imagine that which we don't see? Right? How do we visualize what doesn't exist? We have to rely on our imagination. And I like to use the metaphor of the imagination as a muscle that we can't all of a sudden wake up and decide we're gonna change the world because we haven't exercised the muscle. So when there's a social problem or there's something that you need to resolve within your own heart, it's useful to exercise the muscle of your imagination prior to that moment. And so what does that look like to use your imagination? Uh, and so I've come up with three different ways for myself that I like to rely on my imagination. The first of which is my internal imagination, which is the stepping over that line. So what does it mean to change your response to reality? If I move through the world not giving people the benefit of the doubt, for example, which is something that I've heard many times this burn, so the universe likes to make sure I know my lessons by making sure I learn them five times. Um, so when you don't give people the benefit of the doubt, right, you are met with the same skepticism that you put out into the world. So if I approach the world with love and with an open heart, I step into that reality. I step outside of fear, outside of judgment, and into forgiveness and understanding. So I change my reality that way because I imagine that there's goodness where there might not be goodness. But if I imagine it, then I create it. The second way to do that is to embody your imagination. So. Um, Earlier in the year, I was wearing a bright blue wig on every first date I went on. And um, <laughs> I would, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. And it was fun because I would go out and I would feel like this badass, like superhero, alien queen, and I would just show up and if people were like, 
I don't know, then I would be like, cool, that's probably the last time we're gonna hang out. But if people didn't do that, then I was able to move with confidence and feel like this person is radically self-expressed. And when I was confident and radically self-expressed, then that's how I was received. And so what I was putting out there was that I was this confident, badass superhero, and I was treated that way in return. And so I changed my reality to someone who is normally, you know, I like to kind of keep to myself, I like to observe from a distance, um, I'm very cautious, I'm a Capricorn, so I like to sort of see what I'm getting into, and it allowed me to be this bold, courageous, brave person. Uh, so I embodied, I embodied my values uh, and sort of performed them. So if you can embody the reality that you that you want to see in the world, it's sort of like you go down the rabbit hole, to use the theme, you go down the rabbit hole and you, you take a costume and you put it on and you step back out and you say, you know, here's what, here's what I have. Um, the third way is to change your actual reality. So Burning Man is the most beautiful example because everything you see in front of you is the result of imagination that everything in this world is a result of someone's manifested imagination. And so how do we then collectively rely on our imagination to change our world, actual physically change it? If we all agree on a certain set of principles or guidelines, how does that change reality? Um, so one of my campmates is here, and I wanted to share something that he said to me the other day, we were talking, it's his first burn, I'm not gonna <laughs> call him out. It's his first burn, I asked him what, um, what was the most notable about his burn so far. And he said, in a beautiful, a beautiful uh, answer that I will condense, that it was the immensity of my smallness. And that really resonated with me because we're all pretty small, you know? And when you look out into the world on this playa, you think, how, how did I get here? And, and why do I deserve to be here? And if you consider the immensity of your smallness, you can't change the world. I can't be charged with ending police brutality. But what I can do is be fully self-expressed and to say, I matter just as I am. And that's all I have to do. I have to imagine what I don't see, which is that I am worthy. You know, I don't see myself reflected in a lot of spaces in, in TV and movies and magazines. I don't see myself often. I have no model. So if I imagine that I am beautiful and worthy and necessary, then that's my only responsibility in the world. I don't have to fix everything. So what I encourage you to do is find whatever your imagination tells you, um, whatever you see, whatever you visualize that doesn't exist, and you step into it, and then you have to tell us what it is that you saw in that portal. So we're all here at Burning Man, right? And now we're charged with going back into our lives and telling people, here's what's possible. Um, there's a beautiful quote by James Baldwin, which is, the role of the artist is the same as that of the lover. If I love you, I have to show you that which you cannot see. And so when we rely on our imagination, we are visualizing that which we cannot see, and it is our responsibility to share. When you go down the rabbit hole, what do you see? Uh, what do you find? What does it feel like? And to come back out and to embody that and to internalize that and to manifest that and then show other people what you saw. Thanks.